What's up you guys, Robert Allen here. Hope you're doing well. Super excited to get in today's video. It's gonna be all about three emails that made my first $1 million as a copywriter. You know, one thing every copywriter loves to brag about is the day that they pass that elusive $1 million in sales number. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was first getting started as a copywriter and first even thinking about writing, I just thought that that number seemed so out of reach. But, you know, as I actually started to work with clients and write sales pages and write sales emails and things of that nature, I started to see that maybe it wasn't so impossible. And in fact, that turned out to be true because in a few short years, I went on to sell over $50 million in products online. And a lot of that comes from just one channel, writing emails. And so today, what I wanted to go over is three emails, and really they're email templates that have been responsible for the bulk of the revenue that I've ever been able to generate online as a copywriter. And I want to show you what those templates are, and I'll actually be giving you down there in the description of this video some email examples that I've written for different clients and things of that nature so that you can study them and that you can model them. So without further ado, let's get right into that first type of email that helped me generate my first million dollars as a copywriter. Number one, the lift note. You know, one of the most common pieces of advice that copywriters are told and things that we learn when we go to study copywriting books and things of that nature is we think we're going to be writing, you know, multi-thousand word sales pages that just go on and on and on. And we're told that if we want to write a converting VSL that it needs to be this like 30, 60, 90 minute thing. And in fact, that is true. There are copywriters at companies like Agora and, you know, big publishing houses where almost all the energy of their in-house copywriters is on creating these types of assets because they're incredibly valuable to businesses. But there's a side of this that they often don't explain, which is this page is great and all, but we need to get eyeballs over to it. Someone needs to see this before it can convert. And in fact, this is where lift notes come in. So the, the, the term lift note actually comes from, you want to, imagine this is an email, sorry, that box is a horrible. Lift the user over to the page. And you, the, the direction is you're, pushing them out of email over to this converting asset. And so these are called lift notes and places like Agora and all those big publishing houses that you guys are familiar with and a lot of different clients that you will interface with as a copywriter really need this type of work. Anyone who has a standing sales page or a standing VSL generally needs this type of content and it's incredibly valuable because it takes an entirely different skill set to get someone over to this page than it does to create this monster of a sales page or this monster converting asset. And so when I was first getting started as a copywriter, this is almost all I did. I had an expert copywriter who was above me, who was entirely focused on optimizing this and this type of content. And so he was spending all of his energy here, but I was incredibly valuable because I got really good at writing these types of emails. And so what I wanna do is show you some characteristics of lift notes that lead to higher conversions, higher click-through rates, higher open rates, and some of the things that I've seen that helped me, you know, to write emails that, you know, generated over a million dollars from a single email. And so let me get into that just real quick. The number one key to writing compelling lift notes and these lift notes can be responsible for millions of dollars in sales is revealed right behind this marker and eraser. And in just the next few minutes, what I wanna do is I'm going to explain to you guys a secret that will allow you to know how to write emails that get this type of click where people cannot resist knowing what's behind that. And all it has to do with it's just one word that I've hidden behind this eraser and marker. And all you have to do is, if you want to know what it is, I just want you to click right here. So that was my cheesy way of just saying, the number one secret to compelling lift notes and the things that will lead to the highest conversion rates and the highest output, and then, you know, obviously the, the better results for the client, the better results that you get in your paycheck, is curiosity. Basically, you know, I've seen copywriters time and again where they try to explain the why you should click in this email in great detail. And almost every time that you do that with a lift note, it flops. Because what you're trying to do is 
Remember, we have this converting asset over here. All we want the email to do is drive the click. It, you know, the quality of that click does come into play, but at the end of the day, it is a numbers game. So the number one thing that you want to do with your emails and your lift notes particularly is to drive curiosity when you have a situation where there is a converting asset on the side. Curiosity is the thing that you want to be focused on. And so you do that by, you know, you might want to watch the VSL or read the sales page and just kind of take down notes of different things that interest you and different stories that are really compelling to you. One time I was writing a uh, copy for a crypto promotion, you know, it was to get people to invest in different cryptocurrencies. And I thought one of the most fascinating things on this sales page that my um, mentor had written was the fact that there was this system that's scanning the markets 24 hours a day and it's constantly looking for these opportunities. And you know, that's buried at the end of this video sales letter. And so what I came up with in the, the lift note was I just said, you know, sorry, I don't know if you guys can see that that low. What I came up with in the lift note was just talking about this concept of the machine. And we sent this email on a Saturday and I was like, you know, the market, the stock market goes to sleep, but this machine that I wanna show you is constantly scanning it for opportunities. And one thing you guys don't know about crypto is that it's open 24 hours a day. So this machine is constantly scanning that market. Now, if you want more details on this machine and how it could potentially land you a 45,000% return, click this little button here. So all it was is just reading this sales page, looking for different fascinations kind of baked into it, and then writing emails about it. You know, you might be able to, if your client has a different, a sales page that's, you know, 45 minutes long or, you know, 10,000 plus words, you might find 20 to 30 fascinations that you can spin into curiosity-driven emails, just kind of turning them out like clockwork. And guys, these are incredibly valuable to businesses because the number one thing is don't try to explain, don't try to teach, just try to get the, the fascination, try to get them curious to learn more. And so that, guys, that is one of the most powerful emails that you'll learn to write. I'll put about 10 of them down beneath this video for you guys to download and study. And that way you can kind of see some examples of this. But as you can see, that is one thing that you can do to get people to click through to these converting assets. And the email, remember the email is responsible for that revenue that gets, that gets calculated because the email is what's driving the clicks. Without the clicks, you don't get the user to convert to a sale. So that is number one. Now we'll get into number two. Number two, the deadline. Raise your hand if you're on a list right now that is sending you emails about how this is the last chance to buy. This is when the sale is going away. Chances are anyone who's watching is actually playing out full out with me is raising their hand right now because almost all marketing does this. We leverage deadlines. And why is that? Because people need an incentive to act. In fact, in this book I have over here on the shelf, Robert Cialdini's Influence, which I recommend every copywriter read. Urgency is one of the biggest ways to create movement and to create influence and create a sale because you know people think it's the last, the last time to do something or something is going away. We hate that feeling. And so deadline emails are one of the most powerful emails that you can learn to write. And in fact, when I was first writing sales emails, the first funnel that I was writing for Ramit Sethi's company, and I was honestly kind of concerned about my ability to hit the projections for this, this um, launch. And I remember I was actually chatting with you know our copy chief, and at the time he was like, don't sweat it. Your deadline email is so good. And in that last day, not only did we, uh, so if you imagine the sales were kind of trickling, trickling along like this on a day-by-day -day basis, on the last day, we sent the deadline email that was optimized and that was the sales number. Just skyrocketed up. And in fact, it's not uncommon for businesses to see you know, 80% of the sales volume to come in on that last day of sales opening. And so obviously, if you know how to write a really strong deadline email, this can be a powerful thing that you learn to do for companies. And so what I wanna do is show you guys some best practices and things that I've learned that really go to create a really strong and compelling deadline email.
So the first big key of deadline emails that sell is they have emotional stories of transformation. One of the things that we've learned throughout testing with different companies and clients throughout the years is that a deadline email doesn't just need to say, you know, you have four minutes left, click here to buy. You know, generally, if someone is waiting until the last minute to do something, you need to pull on their heartstrings a little bit. You need to kick them over the fence and do something a little extraordinary to get their attention, to bond with them, and to create, you know, this buying urgency. And you know, one of the things that you can do to do that is to tell an emotional story of transformation. And so let me explain what that means. You know, one of the previous companies that I worked for was Ancient Nutrition and Dr. Axe, which is a, it's led by a doctor who, you know, he's overcome and he's helped people overcome many, many health challenges through the years. And he has this great program that kind of helps people, you know, heal a digestive issue and reclaim their health from the inside out. And you know, in the last email in that series, we start out with a story about his mom who actually battled breast cancer. And we talk about how she kind of felt so lost in the medical model and how she truthfully didn't know if she was gonna make it to the other side and how he, as his, the son of this woman, just, you know, just emotionally wrecked and just kind of trying to figure things out. And that's what drove him down this path of natural medicine. He helped her heal all naturally. And she's actually breast cancer free today. And what really drove him down this path of natural healing and you know discovering this incredible program was that story with his mom. And so that is an example of this emotional story of transformation. It shows you know an extreme moment of stress and then how he overcame that stress and how that led to the creation of this incredible program. You know, there's different examples of this and I'll put some of those down in the resources below. Of Almost every company has a similar story of this. You know, the founder's back was against the wall and then, or they, you know, they saw this big gaping hole in the market, they saw this problem and then they went out and solved it. And that is one of the best things that you can do in a deadline email because it comes off as you know, the story that you have to read and then you mentioned that this is, thing is going away. So that is the key number one to deadline emails that sell. So key number two to deadline emails that sell. You wanna reiterate benefits plus the guarantee. You know, so you have this emotional story that you start out with and you really don't wanna spend a ton of time on it. But then once you pivot into your program or your supplement or whatever your offer is, whatever the thing you're selling is, you wanna reiterate the benefits and just slam them over the head with all the different benefits that people get. You know, with this, you know, Healing Like You Gut program that I mentioned, we would talk about, you know, how you're gonna feel better and, you know, you're gonna seem 10 years younger than you are today. Just kind of, you know, not really talking about the features of the program, but only benefits. And then another big thing is you want to reiterate the guarantee. You know, really in this email, that's the time to tell people you can get started with free. This is your last chance before it goes away. And, you know, guarantee if your product or the thing that you're offering has that, this is a great time to throw that in as I mentioned. And so that is a number two thing that you want to include in deadline emails that sell. Now let's get into number three. Number three, the deadline itself. That is where you want to, you know, have your flashing button and tell them, you know, you have four hours left. You can, you know, wait and this thing will be 30% more expensive tomorrow or the opportunity goes away tomorrow or you can get started right now. And so this is really three keys to deadline emails that sell. If you kind of mix these two things together, these three things together, these two powerful results for your email. You know, the first time I actually, you know, wrote one of these types of emails for uh, Ancient Nutrition and Dr. Axis Company, that email went on to generate more than seven figures by itself. And you know, you can write emails like this for almost every company that you'll end up writing for because all of them should be using deadlines if they aren't. And if they are, they can probably do their deadline emails a bit better. And this is the structure that I have found to work best through the years. And so I will include a few examples of those that you guys can see down below, but you definitely wanna be using this when you are writing deadline emails. So now let's get into the third email template that's been responsible for my first million dollars as a copywriter. Number three, the welcome email. Guys, this is probably one of the most underrated 
emails that copywriters write. You know, sometimes it is a thankless email that gets kind of just tossed into the beginning of a series when, you know, someone opts into a list. And sometimes we're just like, you know, here's your thing, thank you, bye, we'll see you in a couple emails. But it turns out, you know, they've done studies on this and the best time to engage with a prospect and actually potentially convert them into a customer is right there in the very beginning of your relationship. You know, you might go into a different CRM if you guys are working with clients or if you, you know, are working on behalf of companies. You know, go look at the first email that your prospects receive. You might see a number, 60 to 80% open rate, and the click-through rate will be insane. This is probably the highest number that you'll ever see from any email you'll send. And yet, most people, it's just a thankless thing that they never think about. So let me explain some of the keys to a really strongly converting welcome email. So there's four keys to a really strongly converting welcome email, and I'll go over them each in detail. The first one here is the simple, hi, hello, welcome. You'd be surprised on how many businesses do not do this. They just, you know, it literally just will have a button and it will just be like, download the thing that you opted in for. Or it literally will just be like, here's your link to your webinar. And they will never really truly welcome the reader to the list. And you know, one of the principles that I always have when I write emails on behalf of clients and stuff is just, you know, how would I like to engage with a friend if I was just, you know, opting into their list? I would love if they said hello. I would love if they just kind of greeted me and just kind of, you know, you can, it's so easy just to add, you know, F name and just make people kind of feel like you're writing one-to-one -to, -one to them. And this is a big differentiator between what the emails that you'll write as a welcome email and so many different businesses. But obviously that's not the biggest secret because just saying hello is not really gonna, you know, make you make bank. But the next thing that you wanna do is really important and that is where you share the mission of the company and really express the values of your business to your readers. You know, one of the things we do is we, you know, we have a CBD client that we worked with in the past and they actually go to extremes to make sure that their CBD oil was extremely high quality. And you know they source it from a specific country, and the founders actually go to all the farms, and they have these, these cool pictures with this type of stuff. And that's the type of thing that you want your readers to know. That's part of the story that you want them to know. You know they probably just opted in for ten dollars off, but remember, sixty to eighty percent of people are opening this, so they might see this. And this is a really important piece of information that you can include. So you might say something like, you know, we are totally obsessed about quality. You know, I could spend more time kind of listing all the things we do to ensure the quality of the supplements that we offer, but I just want to tell you about three things that we do that's a little bit different than other companies. One, we actually go to the farms. Two, blah, 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 all this type of stuff, and just kind of say the mission of the company. And this is how you bond with your readers right away. And people in your target market who really value these types of things, it is going to pull on their heartstrings. I'm like, yes, I love that you're saying this type of thing. So. Once you share the mission, you wanna pivot out of that and say, you know, but obviously we have more to share than we could possibly fit into this one tiny email. So here's what you can expect over the next, you know, couple weeks or as a new reader or whatever you wanna say. And that's where you wanna set expectations because every good relationship starts off with, you know, what to expect. You know, if you're gonna be emailing me 10 times a day, I need to know that right away. I need to know what to expect. But also if you're gonna be emailing me only once a month, I might miss that email, but I might want to know about that. So that's where you can kind of share expectations. You know, what are these types of emails going to say? You know, you might say something like, you know, as a new reader, we have a series of educational content we would love for you to see. And over the next seven days, we'll actually be sharing that with you. So just literally just set those expectations right there in that welcome email. And then the last part, and this is actually the most important, is to embed an offer or a teaser of an offer. They, they both work, but what I've actually found is to just go ahead and put that offer right there in the first email. Sometimes what I'll do is just put it in the PS, and I'll just say, you know, since you made it all the way to the bottom, I wanna share a gift with you. Here's $10 off, or 30% off your first purchase. And this, guys, remember, 60 80% of readers are probably seeing this. This is a really, really powerful way to embed offers and get a lot of results via email. So many companies do not do this, and if you are going after a client and you notice they're not doing this on their welcome emails, if you add that in, 
you can generate passive income in north of you know six seven figures depending on the traffic for this business with just a one simple ps one simple line of of copy in a ps or you know sometimes you know companies do webinars they open up their sales at specific times so sometimes you can tease out that that's coming and just tell them to look out for it tomorrow but if you combine all these elements into a welcome email you will probably be able to generate seven figures with this email alone so Hopefully you guys got value out of this. These are three email templates that have been responsible for multiple millions of dollars in sales. And for me and for my agency, you know, we write emails like this on behalf of clients every single week. And you guys can see some examples of that down below this video. But if you guys like this, make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I can't wait to release more content like this. And you guys liking it and hitting that subscribe button is how I know you're actually enjoying it. You're actually liking this stuff. So I'm Rob, you've been awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next video.